when I think of Killers of the Flower Moon in retrospect, um, I'm led uh, to a, an inexorable conclusion that kind of pains me because I'm a I'm the biggest fan of Scorsese. Well, I'm a big fan of Scorsese. I won't say I'm the biggest uh, because I'm sure there are others who, out there who can top me. Um, with their Scorsese enthusiasm, but I, I've been a fan of Scorsese for a, a long, long time. I really like like his work, um, and uh, you know, at, at at one time earlier in my life, he his films uh, almost influenced me into going into uh, film myself. Luckily, I didn't make that choice. That choice, unfortunately, I I did make the career choice that I did make, <laughs> which was marginally better but not much better but that's neither here nor there um but here's here's what i i just can't get away from with this movie killers of the flower moon it, it's like it's not um it, it, it's something that that's that's it's like a switcheroo i was trying to think of right th the right way of putting it it's a switcheroo um because I know that a lot of people saw this movie, saw the preview for this movie, and they thought to themselves, oh boy, this is going to be totally woke, anti-white crap. Um, you know, spare me, spare me that. You know, oh no, Scorsese is going woke. Um, you know, it, it gave that sort of, uh, like, uh, it, it, I, I could see why people would feel that way uh, about it. You know, I think history uh, is riddled with lots of people of all different races doing bad things, and that includes white people. And, you know, when anybody does bad things, they should be held accountable, white people included. So I don't necessarily see a movie that shows poor behavior by white people as being anti-white. It sort of depends on how it's handled, if it's just sort of handled like, uh, oh, this is just typical of this is just typical white behavior or this, that's, that's the white man for you or something like that. Um, uh, or if they're, they're just, they're, if, if they're trying to, uh, to demonize whiteness, uh, which is the more, you know, the, the, the more egregious, uh, kind of, uh, woke sort of scenario that you find. But the switcheroo, and it's actually kind of interesting, but you have to watch the movie itself uh, to see it. But once, once you actually watch the movie, uh, all three hours and how, however, 20 minutes of it, um, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the stuff you see in the preview is only half the story. So, you know, what, what you see in the preview is, you know, these, you know, uh, greedy, uh, white men, uh, going to these, to this Osage, uh, this, this, uh, 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 you know, American Indian community that's accumulated a lot of wealth because they, they, uh, struck oil going in and, and, uh, you know, doing, um, uh, nefarious things to get the wealth for themselves and, and, uh, and harming the, the, uh, the natives who, who live there in various ways, including murder. Um, and also just, you know, scheming their way in. And, um, and so that, that's, that's what you see in the preview, but which that, but that's only half of the story. Um, and I, I think I'm not going to go into detail about, you know, this, the, the, the plot, because I, I recorded a prior video where I did that. So, I just want to focus on, you know, what's, what's more compelling me now, what I, what I find more compelling to talk about now. The switcheroo comes about halfway through when the story gets to be less about, um, less about Robert De Niro's evil character and, uh, uh, Leonardo, uh, DiCaprio's, uh, evil slash dumb character. He's, 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 He's more just just sort of doing what he's told. He's he's like a a, a, a born follower um, who just doesn't really have much 
much um, gumption of his own, uh, and he just he just lets uh, De Niro's character steer steer his decisions more or less. Um, never exactly is explained why he's able to marry Lily Gladwell's character, why what she sees in him, other than you know he's handsome in in uh, you know the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio way of being handsome. Uh, but that even that that aspect of of DiCaprio is kind of toned down. He's sort of made to look, uh, you know, kind of uh, grubby and and not so uh, appealing, <laughs> even physically. Um, you know, they 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 kind of uglify him for this role. So anyway, um, the story shifts about midway through, and it becomes about the investigation. And what we see happen, and, you know, I've, I've, I said this before in my prior video when I said it's, I, I had the, I, you know, I said that, that it's actually a pro-white movie. I, I, I use that in the title, uh, you know, sort of um, tongue in cheek or, 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 you know, not, not without a degree of irony, but just also to get the, the viewer's attention because the, 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 th the way the movie ends is with this FBI investigation, and the FBI are totally the good guys. They are, uh, they come in, they do what has to be done, uh, you know, they, they find the, the perpetrators, and they see to it that they are punished for their crimes. And there's no moral ambiguity with the FBI. <clears throat> now, that's kind of ironic, like an in Indian a movie about Indians, like a, a pro American Indian movie, which portrays the FBI positively. I, I I wouldn't think, I would think that would ruffle some feathers, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> amongst the American Indian, uh, um, you know, activist uh, sorts who who know stuff about their history and, and and ways in which they were taken advantage of by the federal government, and to see this movie come along and say, you know, that the Osage, you know, these, these natives, uh, uh, were basically completely helpless. They were just, uh, they were just going down, um, uh, like, like dominoes left and right, uh, you know, and, and, uh, they, they couldn't do anything to protect themselves. They couldn't do anything to protect their, their community. Um, and uh, it wasn't until the FBI rolled in and started kicking ass, uh, you know, and the FBI, of course, is all, <laughs> they're all middle-aged white men, uh, <laughs> like or middle-aged or old or older uh, white men. Um, <laughs> so, so it's, uh, that's, in, in that sense, I said it's a pro-white movie, but what I'm afraid of and what I what I really dislike having to say is that I'm afraid that this is this is uh, uh, you know a stealth uh, you know pro Fed movie, which makes me suspect that uh, something has compromised Scorsese in the making of this movie, um, and I don't like to think that because I I don't I I, I think of Scorsese as a pure auteur, you know, and, and like, and, and a man of integrity, and, and an artist of integrity, somebody who would just, just wants to give his vision, uh, you know, through, through, through his work, um, and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't allow it to be compromised by outside forces who have an agenda. But, but, if you see this movie, you can't, you can't come away without feeling like, wow, this is really a pro FBI movie. This movie makes the FBI look really good. Um, and, and the interesting thing is it makes the FBI look really good to, to people, the kind of people today who would be most, uh, uh inclined to, to not uh, be favorable towards the FBI, i.e., you know, middle American whites, middle American conservative whites, you know, who, who, uh, 
I mean, because in recent years, it's been more of a thing of, you know, the FBI and, and all, all, uh, areas, all, all the, all the alphabet, uh, agencies going woke and, and basically saying, you know, oh, it's uh, domestic terrorists, white males from the heartland. They are, they, they pose the biggest threat to our security and we, we've got to get tough on them. And, you know, that's, that's been what's been out. That's been the vibe that's been out there for the last few years. And so as a result, you've seen, you know, whereas in prior ages, in prior decades, people, uh, you know, conservatives would have respect for law enforcement and even for federal law enforcement. Well, that's definitely taken a, a sharp turn, uh, to, uh, uh, towards, uh, uh, towards suspicion and disapproval, you know, maybe going all the way back to, to Waco and Ruby Ridge. Um, but, but certainly more, uh, recently, uh, you know, since 2016, the, you know, we, we've come to see the FBI as being this, this, uh, this very, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, this, this, well, you know, speaking of, uh, uh, being compromised as an extremely compromised, um, arm of the federal government, a weaponized form of the, of the federal government. That's not just pursuing that disinterestedly pursuing, uh, you know, law enforcement just in, in a disinterested way, uh, regardless of anyone's agendas, but that is clearly, uh, clearly, you know, trying to enforce a particular kind of agenda. And so now in 2023, they release a movie, which is supposed to be about, uh, you know, these, uh, these shady doings, the sort of true crime story, uh, amongst the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, American Indian tribe uh, of the Osage, which is an interesting story. I mean, it's, it's something I, I hadn't even, I hadn't known about before. So, uh, so, and I think a lot of people, it was, it was new to a lot of people, but, but it, it, it starts as that sort of story. And then it, it, it becomes this, this totally other thing. It becomes this, this, this story about how the FBI is so great and can be relied upon and can be trusted. And, you know, local law enforcement, uh, you know, the local sheriff there, you can't trust them. Uh, like the sheriff at, the, at, at in, in this Osage community is, is, uh, is right there with these, these, uh, nefarious perpetrators, you know, in, in bed with them essentially. But the FBI comes, you know, comes in from Washington and kicks ass, you know, uh, and, uh, and so the, I, I don't know, I don't know how many people will view this m movie, uh, you know, who are, who already think it's going to be woke trash, but, but if people, you know, maybe they think, oh no, it's, it may, it might be woke trash, but Scorsese is a great filmmaker. So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I'll go and watch it. And then it's like, oh, oh, actually the FBI are, are, they're really good. They're really good guys, you know? And, and it influences you on, if you don't, um, if you don't afterwards say, wait a minute, what did I just watch? What was the message that was broadcast in the movie that I just watched? Uh, and why, why, why now? Why have that message in this movie now at this juncture? If you don't ask yourself those kinds of questions, then you're just left thinking, well, uh, you know, it was, uh, this, this, this story is probably basically accurate, uh, in, in, uh, in its historical retelling of events and the FBI are good guys. So we should trust them because they're probably, they're probably actually on our side. They're probably, you know, they're, they're, they're good middle-aged white family men, just like us. <laughs> just like us in middle America. So maybe we shouldn't be so suspicious of them anymore. Let's, let's, uh, let's be more open to the idea that the FBI can, can actually uh, do good. Uh, and let's, 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 let's stop just, uh, thinking about them always as just being, 
part of the problem, you know. Um, I mean, I, I, uh, the more I think about it, the more that I'm led to that kind of conclusion. Now, if, have you seen uh, Killers of the, of the Flower Moon? Uh, if you have, what do you think? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Uh, uh, interested to hear what anybody has to say. Thanks for watching.